welcome to Shiloh Baptist Church. We are a place of peace where Jesus is Lord and people are lost. We exist to employ. Exalt. Engage. Experience. Equip. Empower. Good morning, my name is the Reverend Dr. Danielle Brown and I'm the senior pastor of the Shiloh Baptist Church here in Plainfield, New Jersey and I wanna welcome you to the Shiloh Experience. We are absolutely elated that you have chosen to worship with us today. Whether you're worshiping here in the sanctuary or as part of our virtual congregation, even you may be watching this on replay. We're just glad that you are here. Listen, if you're with us in the sanctuary, Take a moment to check in on social media. Let all of your friends know that you are here at the Place of Peace. If you're worshiping with us virtually, take a moment to share this broadcast. Let all of your network know that something is happening at Shiloh that is going to change their lives forever. Take a moment to like this broadcast. Matter of fact, don't just like it, love this broadcast. And then tag your friends in the comments. We want the whole world to know that Shiloh Baptist Church is a place where Jesus is Lord and where people are loved. We're so glad that you're here. Let's prepare ourselves for an incredible worship experience today. Bless the Lord. We honor the Lord on today. We bless him. We give him glory and honor. For this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. You've been so good to me. Thank you. 
that you would open your mouth and give a holy God a great praise in this building. Come on, Zion, lift up your voices even under the mask. You can give him glory. You can give him honor because he deserves it. God, you deserve it. Ahead. Yes. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts this morning by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, O oh God. Yes, Lord, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name and to give you your praise and glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Jesus. The name that is above every name. The name that gives us access to the very throne room of heaven. Father God, we come with humble hearts, oh God. And we come, oh God, with our spirits lifted up. We come because your word says that we can come boldly to your throne of grace. And we can ask for help in the time of need. Father God, at this time, oh God, we, we praise you and thank you that you kissed us with this liquid sunshine, oh God. And, and that we had a heart and a mind to come out to the house of praise and worship to give you the glory and the honor that you so richly deserve. Oh, Father God, we just praise you for those that are here and those that are online. Father God, we thank you that, you're, that you can reach. You can reach the masses, oh God. And we thank you for the power of prayer. Oh, Father God, we thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who is seated at the right hand of the majesty on high, who is our high priest, who is our intercessor, and he is our interceptor. And so, Father God, we thank you for the privilege to be able to intercede one for another. Father God, Eric Carter, you called Eric Carter, and you called uh, Penholm, Lloyd Penholm, oh God. And so, Father God, we know that earth has no sorrows that you cannot heal. We know that you sit on the circle of the earth and you do all things well. But, Father God, families are left behind, and, and they're hurting, and they're mourning, oh Father God. But we praise you for the Holy Spirit that comforts, oh God. And we thank you, oh God, for your promise that you will wipe all tears from our eyes. And so, Father God, we come make an intercession for those who are sick, those in the hospital, oh God. Oh, oh, the list is numerous, oh God. You know your children, the very hairs on their head are numbered. And so, Father God, you know the diagnose. You know, oh Father God, every doctor, you know every nurse, you know the at-home situation. Father God, we put it all in your hand. We, we, we pray for those that are victims of COVID, oh God. We just lift up the situations to you because your word says that you are our head and you 
have put all things under Jesus' feet. And so, Father God, every name that is named, oh God, be it cancer, high blood pressure, whatever the situation is, whatever it is that each of us are going through, you know, oh God, nothing passed through your hands without you knowing. Nothing happens to us without passing through your hands. We thank you that you're sovereign and that you sit on the circle of the earth, oh God, and you rule and you super rule, oh God. And so whatever is going on in our world and in its systems, oh God, we earthquakes and 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 in diverse places, oh God, and fires and floods, oh God, we, we are praying for those. We have compassion for those. But Father God, we know that you, you're there. We, 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 your word tells us that you're ever present. And so we ask, oh God, that you show yourself mighty, show yourself strong, move on, on the hearts of your people, oh God. Have mercy today. And so Father God, as we come with humble hearts, thanking you and praising you for all that you are. Your word says for us to come with thankful hearts, oh God. And we come with thankful hearts because we know, oh God, that you're working all things, all things, no matter what it is that we're going through, you're working all things together for good. And you're gonna get some glory and some honor out of it. We don't know how and we don't know when or we don't know where and we don't have to know all the details because we are walking by faith and not by sight. And so Father God, we as your children, we come just praising you and thanking you because there's no God like our God. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. And so we come lifting up your name. We come praising your name. We come giving you glory and we give you honor, oh God, in spite of what we're going through. Because your word promises their yea and amen. Your word promises that it will not return unto you void. Your word promises that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but you deliver us out of them all. Father God, the you are our light, our salvation. Whom shall we fear? You're the strength of our life. With whom shall we be afraid? You are on our side. Father God, we don't have to fear. What can man do to us, oh God? We thank you that this is our heritage and the vintage of you that you said. No weapon that is formed against us will be able to prosper. Father God, we come on anticipatory tiptoes to receive the word from on high on today. Open our hearts, touch our hearts to receive. We thank you for our pastor, oh God. We know that you are prayer, prayer answering God because you sent her here to us. And so, Father God, continue to bless her. Anoint her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. We ask, oh God, that you cover her with the blood of Jesus as she comes and as she go. Cover each and every one of us, oh God. And so, Father God, as she stand in this holy place to decree and declare the word of God, Prepare our hearts, prepare our minds, become we come to hear a word from all now. And so we leave this place, oh God. We don't have to know the details. We don't have to know the situation. And we don't ha have to know everything that you're doing. We stand on your word that you're working all things together for our good. We look back over our lives, oh God. And we see your hand of grace and mercy moving, oh God. And so we have no better sense but to love you to trust you and to obey oh God we love you we give you glory if you love him praise him in the house if you love him give him glory and honor in the house call on the holy and righteous name of Jesus leave this place knowing that God has already answered and heard your prayer amen amen and amen hallelujah Amen. Amen. This morning's scripture is coming from Psalm 90. This is the NIV version and it's starting at verse 10 and it reads, Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow. For they quickly pass away and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger. Your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Teach us to number our days and that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord. How long will it be? 
Have compassion on our, your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children, and may the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of your hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Our hymn for the morning is Send the Light. We're going to ask that you stand all over the sanctuary. Those of you who are sitting, sitting if you're able, those of you worshiping with us online, we invite you to sing along with us. We're going to sing the first and the second stanza together. And then the refrain. There's a call on the screen, everybody. in the presence of the Lord. This is our children and our youth moment. Somebody say amen for the young people. Amen. Now say amen again if you remember being young. Amen. amen. I know it's a longer time for some of us. But amen to God be the glory. I'm going to ask all my young people from ages 6 to 12 if you would stand please. Good to see you Deron. Come on Trey I see you. Come on praise God for these young people. Lanaya Hunter good to see you. Good to see you. I'm going to ask if you will remain standing. Minister B, just want to share a quick word for you, okay? You might not remember this scripture after I said, but I'll promise to text it to your phones. It can be found in the book of Genesis, chapter 39, verse 21, and it reads as this. The Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. Young people, this text is about a young man who was a young man with his journey started by the name of Joseph. And Joseph, Joseph experienced some hardships in his life. Joseph experienced some people, even in his own family, that wasn't too kind to him. His brothers. And they betrayed Joseph. And they ended up selling Joseph off. And he ended up becoming a slave in a foreign land. So he was taken away from his family, from what he knew to be home, from his normality. And while he was in a foreign land, he was falsely accused of something that he did not do. He was lied on. 
But the Bible tells us that the Lord was with Joseph. And the Lord was with Joseph so much to the point that he used all those hardships that Joseph experienced in his life as stepping stones to promote young Joseph to the prime minister of Egypt. And so I just want to encourage you that sometimes in life you will experience people who will lie on you. People you think should love you and be right by your side, they will betray you. You experience people that's not so kind. Sometimes you may go off to college and be separated from your parents. But just as the Lord was with Joseph, the Lord will also be with you. And I believe that God is with you even right now. So no matter whatever hardships you experience, no matter what it is that you go through in life, I want you to remember that the Lord is with you. Come on, raise your hand, young people. Do you remember and believe that the Lord is with you? Come on, praise God for these young people. Amen. Anybody who's next to these young people, I want you to stretch your hands towards them as we pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for these young lives, these little lambs. We thank you for the privilege of being servants unto them and helping to guide them along this righteous path. God, we thank you for their parents. We thank you for their teachers. We thank you for their classmates. We thank you for each and every positive role model that they have in their life. We ask now, dear God, that you would continue to endow them with favor, that you would give them a spirit of courage, of boldness, that they would be reminded even in the tough seasons of their life that you are with them always. Father God, we thank you for their testimony today and the testimony you will give them on tomorrow, that they will be a living, moving, breathing testimony to those in this dying world that does not know you as their Lord and personal savior. Bless them now, anoint them, dear God, so that they may bring your name glory, not just today, not just this week, but forevermore. This is our praise, our prayer, and our plea in the mighty matchless name of Jesus the Christ. All God's people say amen, amen, amen and amen. Put your hands together for these young people. I'm gonna ask if you would follow Minister B on Instagram or Snapchat at young Shiloh underscore Plainfield. I see some of y'all seasoned folks following me too. Amen. So let your children follow me. God bless you. To God be the glory. Happy off the word, Pastor, put me in check. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. COVID-19 has hit our community hard, but we must not fear. God is with us. God works through us and provides a way for us through God's words, through medical treatments and doctors. But you may still have questions and that's okay. Questions like, is it safe? What if I have a pre-existing condition? Where can I get it? It's good to have questions because questions lead to answers and answers will help us find our way. People of color were part of the testing of the vaccine. People of all backgrounds, uh, people who had pre-existing conditions. I like that. I thought that made me more confident. So get the facts. Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org so that you can make an informed decision when vaccines are available to you. And then we'll be able to do what we've been missing so much, have live worship experiences. Serving others. And connecting with one another in person as soon as we can. Learn more at GetVaccineAnswers.org. Stay connected with Shiloh Baptist Church. Follow us on social media at Shiloh Plainfield and use the hashtag Experience Shiloh. The Union County Prosecutor's Office will host a gun buyback event at Shiloh on Saturday, October 23rd, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the Cultural Arts Center. For more information, please visit ucnj.org slash buyback. Shiloh family join Pastor Brown in Revival on Thursday, October 14th 
at 7 p.m. at Christ Temple Baptist Church in Patterson, New Jersey. Masks are required and temperatures will be checked at entry. On August 23, 2021, a 7.2 magnitude earthquake caused unimaginable devastation to Haiti. An estimated 1.2 million people were impacted. The Deaconess, Women's Fellowship, and the Men and Women in Action Ministries will be collecting items to aid in this effort and are asking of our support. Items will be collected Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 p.m., on Saturdays 9 to 12 p.m., and on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. For more information, please visit the church website. Shiloh family and friends have various options for contributing tithes and offerings to Shiloh Baptist Church. Giving can be done through Zelle, online, by mail, or by texting the word GIVE to 908-293-7376. For more information, please visit Shiloh's website. Good morning, Shiloh. I'm here today to talk about the gift of obedience, in my opinion. Um, the gift of obedience, to me, is giving back to God's kingdom and giving back to the people of God. I've been giving the gift of obedience for over 15 years now. And ever since I've been doing the gift of obedience, the Lord has blessed me and my family tremendously. And I believe that you, the members of Shallow Baptist Church, should please, please give back to the gift of obedience too and see what the Lord will give to you. Do you consider yourself creative? Are you active on social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube? Are you interested in film, photography, or production? Then join Shiloh's media team. For more information, please email socialmedia at shilohplainfield.org or see a member of the media team after service. Shiloh's Institute of Biblical Learning and Education returns on November 7th. Registration begins on October 31st. More information to come. Shiloh's Youth Ministry invites you to Harvest Fest on Sunday, October 31st from 12 to 2.30 p.m. Wear your costumes, grab some candy, take pictures, and have some fun. For more details, contact Minister Brian Johnson. Hey, what's going on, young people? This is Minister BJ from the Shiloh Baptist Church in Plainfield, New Jersey. I'm hitting you up just to personally invite you and let you know that Youth Sundays with a Z for all our Generation Zs will be taking place every third Sunday of each month beginning in October. So I'm looking to see all my young people come out, fellowship, have some fun. You never know what we'll be up to, but whatever it is, will be doing it unto the glory of God. So if you sing, if you minister and dance, whatever your gifts are, young people, hit me up. You can contact me at bjohnson at shilohplainfield.org. But again, come on out and celebrate the Lord with us every third Sundays of each month. God bless you, and I look for your attendance. Peace. That's all for now, Shiloh. Thank you. Glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Is there anybody who's glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Hallelujah. 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 Just say, God, I thank you for another day's journey. I thank you, Lord God. Come on, Shiloh, if you're glad to be here, will you just smile at somebody? Oh, don't smile. Smile. You got to smile with your eyes because we have on these masks. But can you just wave at someone down your row and say, welcome to Shiloh. Welcome to Shiloh. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. I am the Reverend Dr. Danielle Brown, the senior pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church, and I am here 
uh, standing up here now to welcome you to worship. Do we have anyone who is visiting with us for the first time? Would you please stand if you're visiting with us for the first time? Praise the Lord. Uh, we are so glad to see you. Please remain standing. Our ushers are going to grab these cards and they look at the ushers. Come on, put your hands together for these ushers. Uh, they're going to give you a visitor card and this is what we ask is that you would fill that card out because we are absolutely elated that you have joined us for worship today. And here's one thing that you may not yet know that we absolutely know. And that is just a few moments around Shiloh will change your life forever. And so we want to stay in touch with you. We want to keep you abreast of all of the wonderful things that are happening here in the life of the Shiloh Baptist Church. And we want to hear from you. And so please fill that card out. Uh, you can drop it in the offering basket when we uh, come around for offering or you can give it to an usher but please fill it out. And again, we are so glad that you are here with us today. Amen. We've been praying for you, but now you finally manifested. And that is uh, Brother Lester Wilson, uh, who is uh, the uh, the brother of my youth pastor. When I was a, a child, uh, Brother Lester, his, his uh, brother was our youth pastor. And so we are so glad to see you here at Shiloh today. Thank you for pressing your way all the way to Plainfield to worship with us. Amen. Come on, put your hands together together again and Shiloh family we are just so glad to see you and not just those of you that are online or that are in the room but we are having a little technical difficulty with our internet today and because we will replay this we also want to uh, welcome those of you who are joining us via replay we are elated that you are here as well and so if you're visiting for the first time online please drop us a line let us know where you're worshiping with us from uh, some of you are in Cleveland Ohio you're all over the country country tuning in to Shiloh and we are glad that you are here. Shiloh, are we glad that everybody is here? Are we glad? Listen, uh, Minister Brian has already talked about third Sundays. And so Shiloh next week, we is the third Sunday. And so we are going to dress down. Uh, that's right. We're going to dress down even Reverend Thorpe. I I've been coordinating with her. I said, Reverend Thorpe, do you have sneakers? Reverend Thorpe, do you have this? Because we are going to dress. Even the choir. Look, even Brother Wendell Woods is going to dress down next week. Why? Because we are an intergenerational church. Is anybody excited about that? And so here's what I need you to do. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to call your kids, call your grandkids, tell the kids that live on your block, they keep running across your grass. Uh, tell them that they should be at Shiloh next Sunday. The worship experience is for everyone, but next week we are going to specifically uh, let our young people take over, amen? And so make sure we fill the house with young people. Wear your mask, we're gonna be safe and socially distant, but as an intergenerational church, we want our young people to know that Shiloh is a place for them. Is that the truth, Shiloh? It's a place for them. Remember. We are praying for all of those who are in need of special prayer. Minister Tanita uh, lifted up some of the names, but they'll be scrolling on the screens as well. But we are praying and continuing to pray for all of those who are looking this way for prayer. Those that are sick, those that are at home on the sick and shut in and not able to get out. Shiloh, make sure that we are calling people. Make sure we're sending cards, that we are showing love and kindness and the, and the, uh, uh the character of God to everyone who is connected to this church. I also want to share with you that we've made some changes to our morning schedule. And so every Sunday at, at about 8.20 a.m., our deacons and deaconess are leading us in a time of devotion. How many of you uh, remember old school devotion time? Well, we've added that every Sunday. And so if you would like to have a little extra prayer, I want to encourage you to get here a little early. The ushers will let you come right in so that you can be a part of that prayer. How many of you know sometimes you just need to soak in prayer? Prayer changes things. Prayer does indeed change things. And so uh, we want you to know that that's happening at 820. And guess what else? It is giving time at the Shiloh Baptist Church. Come on, put your hands together. It's giving time. It's giving time. Elijah, give me some happy music because the word says that God loves a cheerful giver. The word for that is actually a hilarious giver, right? God loves a hilarious giver. And, and so how many of you are just excited to give? I, I am an electronic giver. And, and so my phone is over there. But early in the service, I went on to Zelle. And I went ahead and I brought my tithe, my whole tithe.
tithe uh, to the storehouse. Are there any tithers in the room? Can you just put your hands together? Because you know that tithing works. You know that the Lord has made his word come alive in your life. That if you bring the whole tithe, what is the tithe? The tithe is 10% of all of your increase. 10%. Say that with me. 10%. Uh, 10% of all of your increase. That is the tithe. Off of the gross. Yell down your road. Say down off the gross. Right? Off the gross. That is the tithe. And then what is the offering? The offering is not just some happenstance thing, but the offering beyond our tithe is the seed that we sow. It's the generosity that we extend. It's the, the missions giving. It is the giving that we do that is beyond the tithe. The tithe is, is the law. Offering is our generosity beyond the tithe. God blesses givers. And I'm not just telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know. Is there anybody else who has that testimony like uh, Trustee Ronald that giving works? And so will all of the givers just please stand? If you need an offering envelope, just raise your hand and our ushers will take care of you. Aren't our ushers amazing? They are so kind. They made you feel welcome. Come on, stand to your feet all over the sanctuary. And if you have an offering envelope, please fill it out. Hey, Bev, uh, fill out your offering envelope. And I know that there's just a line for a name and a, 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 a offering box number. But we're going to ask if on the back side of that you can share with our finance team some additional information. Maybe you don't have an envelope number yet because you've not yet officially joined Shiloh. But we want to capture your information. And so give us your address and an email address on the back side of that offering envelope. Come on, let us stretch our gifts toward heaven. God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to give. We thank you, Lord God, that everything that we have comes from you. And God, this is not a debt that we owe, but this is a seed that we sow. And so we sow cheerfully and we sow, sow, Lord God, understanding and believing that your word is true. That if we bring the whole tithe to the storehouse, that you will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we will not have room enough to receive. Uh, that your word will come alive, that, that says that as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest will not end. And so God, now I pray that when we come back next week, that we will have testimonies of how you came through on your word uh, over the course of the week. God, I pray that as we release these tithes and as we release these offerings, that Lord God, you will prove to your people that sowing into your kingdom is worth it and it works. And so God, we bless you. We thank you for every giver. We thank you now in advance for increase in every area of our lives. We love you and we honor you. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' holy and matchless name. Come on, put your hands together. You are under the direction of our ushers. Come on, Brother Window.
your hands together and give God glory in this place, everybody. Somebody know that God is faithful. Do you know that God is faithful? Anybody know that God is faithful? Anybody know that God is faithful? Does anybody really know that God is faithful in this place? Can we just begin to give God glory in here? The choir is going to sing God is faithful. He's going to remind you how faithful he is. And you know the song. I want you to get the teacher song out there. Is that okay? Faithful is our God. Come on. Put your hands together and give God glory in this place, everybody. Come on. Choir, help us sing in here. Come on. Come on, choir. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, hey, go.
praise. I just need you just to in the spirit. So I take it back in the spirit. So I move your hands and take it back things in the spirit that belongs to you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Reach. Reach in the spirit. Reach whatever belongs to you. What the enemy trying to take back from you. Take it back. Take it back. To take back everything that the enemy stole. God, we thank you for restoration. We thank you, Lord God, that when we are weak, you make us strong. We thank you, Lord God, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, you raise up a standard against him. We thank you, Lord God, that even right now, while we are here warring in the spirit, while we are here thinking about the things that we have lost, the things that the enemy has taken, that you, Lord God, are already over there loosing his grip on these things. That, Lord God, while we are in here worshiping you, you are already, Lord God, working things out at home. That you are already working things out at the hospital you are already working things out at the office tomorrow God we thank you that you're that kind of God God we thank you today for another worship experience we thank you God today for every song that has been sung for every prayer that has been prayed, for every word that has been spoken, for the people that are seated with us and those that are gathered virtually. God, we're grateful. And now we come to this preaching moment. God, I ask that you would sanctify it, that you would make it your own, that you wouldn't allow any of these, your precious people, to suffer because of the humanity of this preacher. But God, will you stand up in me to the end that from this sacred desk to the door and wherever this broadcast may land, your people are edified, your people are encouraged, your people are empowered and they are excited to run on and do your work in ways that will turn this world upside down and not for any glory of our own, but only for the glory of the one who is, who was, and who always will be. And it's in the name of Jesus, that name that is greater than every other name that we pray and that all God's people say amen. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Have you all enjoyed this worship experience thus far? Have you enjoyed the worship experience? Listen, does Shiloh Baptist Church of Plainfield have an amazing music department? Come on, if they have ministered to you all service long, put your hands together. Come on, music department, put your hands together for yourselves. Put your hands together for yourselves. If you have your Bibles, we're going to go to Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, and I am going to read for you verses 10 through uh, 16. Nehemiah 4, verses 10 through 16. We are in the midst of our series entitled, When Builders Build. But today we're going to learn how to fight back. The word of the Lord reads this way. Then Judah said... The strength of the laborers is failing. And there's so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. 
And our adversary said, they will neither know nor see anything till we come into their midst and kill them and cause the work to cease. So it was when the Jews who dwelt near them came that they told us 10 times from whatever place you turn, they will be upon us. Therefore, I positioned men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings and I set the people according to their families with their swords, their spears and their bows. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. And it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work. So it was from that time on that half of my servants worked at construction while the other half held the spears, the shields, the bows, and wore armor. And the leaders were behind all the house of Judah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the fourth chapter of Nehemiah, Samballot has heard that there's some building going on in Jerusalem. The Jews alongside the leadership of Nehemiah are rebuilding the walls of the city and Samballot is salty about it. Scripture in fact tells us that he became furious and very indignant and he mocked them. In his fury, he runs back to his boys in the army of Samaria and asks the question, what are these feeble Jews doing? It is here that his sidekick Tobiah chimes in and says, whatever they build, if even a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. Have you ever noticed, Shiloh, that distractors run in packs? Have you ever noticed that they can never be mad and contrary on their own, but they always manage to find somebody to be their cosigner? This may not be for everybody, but I'm sure it's for somebody. Be very careful that you have not enlisted yourself as a cosigner in an army of contrary souls, especially when that army has taken a position against the work of the Lord. Whatever you do, whether it is the work of your church or the work of the church up the street, find yourself and your mouth on the side of what God is doing. See, Nehemiah and company uh, kept on working. They knew their enemies were lurking, but they kept working. They worked so that they closed the gaps in one night and built the wall to at least half of its height. They were able to accomplish so much work overnight because the people had a mind to work. Somebody say the people had a mind to work. But now Sambalit and Tobiah, they were like Bebe's kids, Elisha. Uh, You know, they didn't die. They multiply. And, and, And along with the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashadites, they heard about this progress and they became even more angry and put together a plot to attack Jerusalem. Now, just a few verses ago though they were calling them feeble Jews this doesn't add up though uh, because Sambalit and Tobiah if you really thought that they were so feeble why did you have to go and get so many people in your corner to come for them May I suggest to you today that sometimes our enemies can see our potential better than than uh, our potential in God better than we can. And not only do they see it, they understand that our potential is bigger than our current situation. See, these people knew Israel's history. They heard of the favor of God that remained upon them even in the lowest moments of their existence. They were able and well aware of their ability to bounce back from failure and bounce back from defeat. Their ability to bounce back from adversity and recover from the low moments along their journey. And so rather than celebrate, they plan to annihilate. 
They want to stop them before they could advance any further. They use nasty tactics of intimidation and threats and lying and scandalizing them with the king. But now uh, Nehemiah and his people find themselves in an interesting predicament. Is there anybody in the house today that's ever had life happen that way? That you know you've got enemies working, but you're committed to God's work. And here you are working. You're working your fingers to the bone. You're breaking your back to make progress. And it seems like it's still not enough. Well, when you've committed to the work, when you've committed to this work, when you've committed to God's work, there are times amidst the building when you have prayed and you have envisioned and you have declared and you have worked that you will look up and you will realize that all of that is just not enough. And it's these moments that make you feel low. But today I want you to know that a low moment does not mean a low lifetime. I I want you to know, let me say it again, that a low moment does not mean a low lifetime. And if you are going to make sure that a low moment does not turn into a low lifetime, I want to invite you to take your cues from Nehemiah and fight back. But if we're going to fight back, there are some things that we will have to be open to. Say these three words after me, Shiloh. Reality. Reorganize. And remember. See, in the 10th verse of our text today, Judah comes with a report. He says the strength of the laborers is failing and the rubbish is so much that we can't even build the wall. And our adversaries are threatening us, saying that we won't see or know anything until we come in to kill them and stop this work. And the reality here is Judah wasn't lying. There was truth to what was being reported. But here's the irony of the report is that Judah is the tribe best known for being excellent in battle. See, see, when they chose David to be their king before the fall of Saul's kingdom, they were small, but in each battle they fought, they grew stronger and stronger. No one could handle Judah. And here they are, Judah, coming with the report of how weary everyone is and how bad the conditions are. And these were warriors not coming to say, here is a situation, let's fight. But now here are great warriors coming saying, Here is the situation. Let's stop. See, another reality that we've got to consider as we band together to rebuild the walls of our church and of our community is the reality of our humanity. What what do I mean? I mean that there will be moments in the midst of this building where even the most brave and valiant and powerful of us by virtue of our humanity will be inclined to weariness. Uh, Even the the greatest among us will uh, be pushed to the point where quitting appears to be an option as a result of coming up short time and time again. Reality is that because we are human, there will be times when the consistently difficult conditions within us and the reality of what is lurking around us will push us to the point of despair. To the point where we feel that all is pointless, uh, where writing another sermon is not worth it, where having another meeting is not worth it, where bringing another tithe or giving another offering feels like it's not worth it, where dreaming is no longer something we feel like doing, and maybe not in the church, but, but, but at home you're saying, I'm not saying one more word to this child, or you're ready to give up on your marriage. We all get to the point where we think that moving forward is not worth it. And the reality is any one of us humans in the room is capable of having a moment of weakness in response to the pressures of this world and the pressures of this work. And it does not mean that you are less called of God. It does not mean that your season is over. It does not mean that you are some lesser quality Christian. It simply means that you are human. Somebody say I'm human. It means that you are human. But my brothers and my sisters, I told you that a low moment does not mean mean a low lifetime and if we are going to be successful in this work of building of building that which God has called us to build wherever God has called us to build it we have to deal with the reality of our circumstances and the reality of our humanity 
And every now and then when the warriors get weak, every now and then when the bravest among us become fearful, we all need somebody like Nehemiah. Someone who will hear the report and deal with the reality of the report, but deal with us from the understanding that this low moment will not be a low lifetime. We all need someone like Nehemiah who will not write us off because of our humanity. See, I like how Nehemiah responds to this report. He, he decides to reorganize. See, dealing with the reality of what is reported by Judah, he does not write them off, but he listens and realizes that before they can fight back, they've got to reorganize. He positions the men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings, and he sets the people according to their families with weapons. Now, Nehemiah, it's important for us to understand this, y'all, that Nehemiah is a cupbearer by trade, not a builder. Did you hear the words that just came out of my mouth? That Nehemiah is a cupbearer by trade, not a builder. But he came to Jerusalem with his heart set on building, not fighting. But, but when life happens in the midst of doing whatever God has placed in our heart to do, we must reorganize. We must be open to switching up and going boldly into some areas that we never imagined we would end up in. We've got to be open to reorganizing and picking up some additional skills and thinking beyond the box that we normally think in. And so Nehemiah reorganizes the people. He shifts some from building and puts them in position to watch and swaps their building tools, the cupbearer, not the warriors, not the nobles, not the army leaders. So sometimes reorganizing requires you to take some instruction from people that you're not used to taking instruction from. Uh, it means that you'll have to be willing to take some instructions about what you think is your area of expertise from some folks that you don't think know as much as you do. But the cupbearer who is now in charge in response to a low moment in the life of Israel, a low moment kind of report from Judah through his own weariness, his own concern about what is going on, the cupbearer sets the people according to their families and says take your swords take your shields take your spears and your bows and in my sanctified hip hop imagination he quoted those famous words of Tupac Amaru Shakur and said I ain't a killer but don't push me See, see, don't you be afraid of them. Fight for your brethren. Fight for your sons, for your daughters and your wives and your houses because a low moment does not mean a low lifetime. But you have to be willing to reorganize on the inside so that you can fight against what's lurking on the outside. And so we must deal with the reality of our circumstances and come to grips with the reality of our humanity and be willing to reorganize so that we are in position to fight and not just fight, but fight to win. Is there anybody in the house today that says, I am not just going to be out here fighting just to fight. If I got to fight, I'm going to fight to win. <laughs> and yeah, so we've got to deal with, with the reality of our circumstances and, and, and be willing to reorganize. And, and, and we've got to do something else. My final point is probably, yeah, I'm at my final point. Come on, put your hands together, Shiloh. I'm already at my final point. And, and this is it. And, and the final point is probably the most vital point. And it fuels my first and second point. But Reverend Thorpe, the way my sermon is set up, it, it comes last. And, and here it is. We've got to remember. <laughs> see, see, before he tells them to fight back, he tells them to remember. Remember what? Well, you heard the text. Uh, uh, Deacon Han, he tells them to remember the Lord. Great and awesome. And when their enemies heard that the Jews were on to their scheme, they ended up with this realization that God had shut their plot down and all of the Jews returned to the wall and everyone continued to their work. And may I suggest to you that we find courage to fight back when we remember who God is. And not only do we find courage to fight back, but when we remember 
who God is, we recover who we are. The choir sang it, I shall recover it all. I saw you clapping your hands saying, I shall recover it all. Well, when we find, when we remember who God is, we recover who we are. And when we remember who God is, we remember why we are here in the first place. And we are able to recover the purpose, the vigor, the focus, the direction, the encouragement, everything that the low moment robbed us of in the first place. And the Bible says, I'm excited about this. You ready, Elisha? Uh, the Bible says this in verse 16, is that the leaders were behind the house of Judah. You don't know why that excites me. You didn't catch it because early on I told you that Judah was in the midst of a low moment and just that quick, Judah is right back in position, uh, right back in position with all the leaders of the camp behind them. Low moments don't mean low lifetimes, but when we remember come what may, I know that culture has changed. I know that ministry is not easy. I know that serving the Lord is increasingly difficult. Uh, there are a whole lot of things working against us, but and they probably will get worse before they get better, but we've got to remember we've got to remember that God is still great and God is still awesome and the reality is before us reality will require us to reorganize but as we reorganize we've got to remember who God is and so even if your strength is failing remember who God is remember that his strength is made perfect in your weakness when you remember who God is. You remember that a low moment does not mean a low lifetime. And so you get back on the wall and you keep on building. And I want to tell you today that Jerusalem and Judah are not the only proof that we have that a low moment does not mean a low lifetime. I recall the story of our Savior's birth in a lonely manger outside in some dirty hay but a low moment does not mean a low lifetime it was not long before the wise men followed a star and brought him fine gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh and right there in a manger a coronation of a baby did occur because a low moment does not mean a low lifetime now let's fast forward some 33 years and that same Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane and this is after he fed 5,000 this is after he has healed multitudes after he has raised Lazarus from the dead after he has cast out unclean spirits uh, Jesus knew what he came down here for he had clarity of assignment and it included not only the whole Hosannas, but Calvary and betrayal too. Yet in his low moment, Jesus cries out, Father, if it is your will, take this cup from me. But low moments don't mean low lifetimes. Come here real quick, shallow, so I can get out of the way. Because finally, we find Jesus hanging on Calvary's cross. And this same Jesus Jesus, who said I and my father are one and no man comes to the father unless he comes through me is found crying out Eloi, Eloi Lama Shabbatani my God my God why have you forsaken me and he gave up the ghost y'all want to hear the rest of the story do you want to hear the rest of the story well like to hear it hear it goes because a low moment does not mean a low lifetime. Jesus went down to hell. He picked up the keys to death, hell, and the grave all night Friday, all day Saturday. But a low moment does not mean a low lifetime. And early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. God bless you, Shiloh. Thank you for coming back a second week. I wish I had something more profound, but it does not exist. All I have to give you is all that there is, and that is Jesus. Jesus got up, and because he got up, your low moments 
don't have to be a low lifetime and because he got up you can fight back you will cry some tears the work will make you weary you want to stop some folks will get on your nerves the ups will be followed by some downs your enemies will lurk but this same Jesus who is the epitome of recovering from life's low moments you got to remember that he is with you that he is with you that he will never leave you he will never forsake you and so as we deal with the reality as we reorganize as we remember who God is we will remember that no weapon formed against us shall prosper we fight back remembering who God is remembering that weeping may endure for a night but joy will come in the morning and so we fight back is there anybody in here who can say I know that Jesus I've tried him and I know him. Is there anybody in here who knows who God is and who will say as of today, my low moments are over. As of today, I will no longer wallow in less than what God has for me. As of today, I'm serving notice to my low moments that they are not invited into my lifetime because God has called me to this work and I won't let it go undone I'm gonna deal with reality I'm gonna reorganize as necessary I'm gonna remember who God is and fight back but the weapons of our warfare the methods of our healing our peace our joy our recovery our comfort they are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds so in our low moments we don't fight like they fight but in our low moments we fight with spiritual weapons so you don't cuss anybody out uh, you don't tell and go tit for tat even though you got time but remember who God is and the word tells us that when God arises his enemies will be scattered and so how do we fight we fight Shiloh by lifting up our God will you lift him come on throw your hands in the air wave them like you just don't care and lift God with your praise come on and fight back with your praise let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise. Come on, Levites, and lift up God with your praise. I got some stuff that I need to get back from the enemy. I have some things that I need the enemy to lose his hold on. And so how do we fight? We fight with our praise. Come on, lift him. With our praise. How else do we fight? We, we fight, Reverend Bell, with our commitment to the work. Yeah. To the work of the Lord. And I wonder, is there anybody in Shiloh today who's ready to fight back? You ready to fight back? And so what do we do? We deal with reality. We reorganize accordingly. We remember who God is and we fight back. And when we do that, we shall indeed recover all, Miss Flora. We do. We will. Come on, standing all over the sanctuary, will you stand to your feet? Stand to your feet. 
And just for a moment before I extend the invitation to salvation and membership, I'd like us all to just stretch our hands toward heaven. You can close your eyes if you need to. I got your back. I'm watching. I won't let anything happen to you. I can fight. But just for a few moments, I'd like you to talk to God about your battle wounds. I'd like you to talk to God about the things that the enemy has taken and that you'd like to recover. Just for a few seconds, I want you to, out of your own mouth, make an altar right where you are and begin to just tell God where you need his help. Deal with the reality of your situation. God, I know the diagnosis was this. God, I know the bank account looks like this. God, I know I got to deal with those crazy people tomorrow when I get to the office. God, there's still a pandemic going on. And I'm not sure what tomorrow holds. Come on and talk to God about it for a few moments. If you're here and you're saying I want to be saved I, I need to know this Jesus this Jesus who gives me empowers me to fight back this Jesus who is not phased by the things that make me afraid but he's so much more powerful than they are this Jesus who can make my whole life brand new if you're here today and you want to be in relationship with this Jesus man, woman, boy, or girl the best decision you can ever make is the decision to make Jesus your own and I want to be clear you don't have to get all your stuff in order you don't have to have all your ducks in a row you don't have to talk the right church lingo or even wear the right clothes just come and Jesus will work on that other stuff later. Matter of fact, some of the things that you need to be delivered from, you can't be delivered without his help. So just come and let Jesus help you. So if you're here today and you're saying, I want to be saved, I want to invite you now to come to the altar. Our ministers are waiting to pray with you. They're very kind people and there's no fear we want to invite you to come and make the best decision you ever could. And then not only are we extending an invitation for salvation, but if you're here today and you're saying, I want to be a member of the Shiloh Baptist Church in Plainfield, this is your opportunity. We want to invite you to join the family. We want to invite you now to come now. Our ministers are waiting for you. Some of them are walking the aisles. They'll meet you right where you are. Because every believer needs a church home. You can be a good Christian without a church. You can be a Christian without a church. But you can't be a good and growing Christian without a body of believers to journey with. And Shiloh Baptist Church is about the kindest church. The most loving church that you will find. We're not perfect. But we're good at what we do. And that is loving people. Amen. So if you're here and you want to join Shiloh, come on down. If you're online and you want to join Shiloh, we're going to ask that you would send us a message in the comments or you can even email officeassistant at shilohplainfield.org and we will make sure that someone gets in touch with you uh, within 48 hours of your email because we want your soul to be saved and the heart of this church is open. It's time for the family to grow. Amen. Come on, Shiloh. Are you happy about what the Lord is doing in the life of this church? Are you happy about it? Amen. Can you just look at somebody and nod your head and say, God is good. God is good. 
look at somebody else and say, you better fight back. All week long, don't you let the enemy steal your stuff. Fight back. Don't let the enemy tell you stories. Fight back. Do I have any fighters? Just wave your hand. Where's the fighters at? Yeah, we're going to fight back, Trustee Timmons. We're fighting back. Come on, we're getting ready to go. Are you ready to go? Y'all are ready to go. Come on, Josiah. It's time to go. Just stretch your hands toward heaven for the benediction. the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest rule and abide with all of you now henceforth and forevermore and may Almighty God bless all of you and may your whole life prove that God is good in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit go in peace serve the Lord with gladness same time same place next week dress down Bring some young people with you. Amen. Shiloh, I love you.